Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to our Sunday online service from St John's Vicarage on what is the last Sunday of the church's calendar. Uh, we celebrate today Christ the King uh, before moving into Advent and the beginning of the church year next Sunday. So let's be quiet for a moment as we prepare to worship our King. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible readings this morning are read by Ezra and Josh, making their debuts on the online service. Uh, you do need to listen quite carefully to the first reading from our youngest ever Sunday online reader. This is Ezra, and he's reading from Ephesians. First reading is from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the same saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and re revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he calls you the riches of his glorious inheritance in, in the saints and his incomparity the great power for us who be live if that be live believe believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength which he extorted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly Realm. Realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come, and God placed all things under his feet and I painted him to be head over everything for the church which in his body the fun the fullness of him who fills everything in every way this is the word of the Lord this is the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. 
And now over to Josh. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, help us this morning to hear what we need to hear. May we hear your voice above all the other voices that clamour for our attention. In Jesus' name. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago, I went uh, to a joint uh, Reading Churches service at the Globe in Portman Road, and the service was entitled Hope and Hospitality. The speaker was Krish Kandiar, and he showed us a picture of a five-year-old boy, uh, but facing away from us so we could just see the back of his head. And he told us that this child was waiting to be adopted, but nobody wanted him. He had behavioural issues. Krish asked us, what does God see when he looks at this child? And people began to shout out answers. Someone to my left shouted out potential. Somebody else shouted out a precious child. And Ben, our new youth worker who was sitting just to my right, shouted out value. And Krish picked up on value. He asked us to imagine a 20 pound note he said, imagine it being stuffed in a sweaty pocket in the back of someone's jeans, forgotten about, perhaps put through a washing machine, trodden into the mud, written on, torn in two as people argued over it and then sellotape back together again. It might look a bit battered. This one probably doesn't look as battered as it should. But what's it worth? still worth 20 pounds no matter what it's been through every one of us is created in the image of God and precious to him equal in worth in his eyes and so how we value one another and therefore how we treat one another really matters 
and people seem to sail through life, don't they? They don't seem to experience many traumas or tragedies. Uh, life just seems to go well and they sail through. Whereas others seem to take a real battering. Sometimes it seems very unfair and it may show in the way they present themselves. But their value to God is undiminished. Matthew chapter 25, we have uh, Jesus' final parable in a series of parables that all speak about the end times and about judgment. They're all warnings and probably when Jesus told them he was aiming them at the Pharisees who thought they were righteous in God's eyes, but actually they weren't. They prided themselves on their obedience to the letter of the law, but they ignored the principles on which those laws were based. The command to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength, and to love our neighbour as ourself. Jesus persistently warned them that they were in danger of being left out of the kingdom because they didn't recognise him as God's anointed king and because they didn't follow his commands. Prayer from All Saints uh, to Advent, we recite a line from Psalm 89, which says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. And every time I've read that this year, I've found myself thinking about how different Christ's throne is to the thrones of most of the earthly rulers of our world today. So many of their thrones are not founded on righteousness or justice, but on selfishness, ambition, greed, lust for power. Christ, our King, is righteous. He always does the morally right thing. He is always good, always loving, always faithful, always pure. He cannot fall. And he's just. He acts with absolute fairness. And at the end of time, all the injustices of our world today will be put right. There will be a reckoning and we will be called to account for the way we've lived our lives and for the way we have treated our fellow human beings, particularly for the way we've treated our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. In verse 40, the king says, what you did for the least of these who were members of my family, these brothers and sisters, you did for me. So I think this parable actually refers particularly to how we treat other Christians, other members of God's family. So how are we treating those around us who are in need? The thirsty, the naked, the stranger, the sick, the captives. Who are they for us? Are there people in our own church communities who need feeding, clothing, welcoming, healing, setting free. We need to start treating as we would like to be treated ourselves. For a minute about how you would like to be treated if you were penniless, hungry, in rags, if you had no friends and you arrived at St John's on a Sunday morning. What might you be hoping for? not be too fussed about the style of worship, the words that are used, the songs that are sung, or even the length of the sermon. But you would, I think, be grateful for the cup of tea, the warmth of the heaters, someone taking time to listen to you, perhaps an invitation to lunch. It would be easy to preach a sermon today that leaves us all feeling guilty about our lack of care for those around us. And as I prepared, I sense that at least some people, perhaps particularly those watching online, might need to hear the commendation of the king who welcomes and affirms the sheep. Because you, you need to know that he has noticed what you do every day, even if you haven't. Is you at home caring for your sick spouse or your spouse with dementia, 
with failing health or your child with special needs. Your concern for your neighbours, your faithfulness in phoning a friend or relative every week, the letters and the cards you send to people who don't get many cards or letters from other people. Notices, those who bring tins for the food bank, those who have standing orders on their bank account that go to church or charities, perhaps those who've decided to leave a legacy in their will that will bless others. All those things. He notices that you notice the people he cares about and you value them as he does. Whatever you did for one of the least in my family, you did for me. But others of us perhaps do need to hear the challenge of this parable. If we're honest, perhaps we do very little to care for other people. We don't really notice those around us very much. And maybe we even avoid the ones who are a bit needy. Goats in this story are not condemned because they've done evil acts. They're condemned because they have not shown kindness and compassion to those around them. Theirs are sins of omission. There's very little evidence that they love God or have faith in him or are trying to live as he commands. They're like the priest and the Levite in the story of the Good Samaritan who cross the road and walk past the man who's been beaten up and robbed. Remember when we studied the book of James last summer, he said, faith without works is dead. Jesus said, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. So are you noticing the people around you who are valued by God? People in church, in the wider Cavisham community, across the world. Their value. What are you doing for them? For Jesus. I'm going to read a poem that was read at the Globe at that service that I mentioned earlier. It's quite hard hitting and it certainly got to me. It's written by Walson Shire, who is a Somalian refugee. It's called Home. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbours running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you, fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burned threats into your, into your neck. And even then you carried the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in an airport toilet, sobbing at each mouthful of paper, made it clear that you wouldn't be going back. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. No one burns their palms under trains, beneath carriages. No one spends days and nights in the stomach of a truck, feeding on newspaper, unless the miles travelled means something more than journey. No one crawls under fences. No one wants to be beaten, pitted. No one chooses refugee camps or strip searches where your body is left aching or prison because prison is safer than a city on fire. And one prison guard in the night is better than a truckload of men who look like your father. No one could take it. No one could stomach it. No one's skin would be tough enough. The go home blacks, refugees, dirty immigrants, asylum seekers, sucking our country dry, niggers with their hands out. They smell strange, savage, messed up their country and now they want to mess up ours. How do the words, the dirty looks roll off your backs? Maybe because the blow is softer than a limb torn off, or the words are more tender than 14 men between your legs, or the insults are easier to swallow than rubble, than bone. 
and your child body in pieces. I want to go home. But home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of the gun and no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore. Unless home told you to quicken your legs, leave your clothes behind, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, drown, save, be hungry, beg, forget pride. Your survival is more important. No one leaves home until home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying, leave, run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I know that anywhere safer than here. value those we see around us in need. How does Jesus value them? Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before him. Are we living out the values of his kingdom? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the value that you place on us, that we are precious to you. Thank you that you notice the good deeds we do, the times when we do value one another and show care and love. Melt our hearts where they are hard. And Lord, if there's more that you want us to be doing, please show us who it is that you want us to treat with value and with compassion. It's to live as you lived. Our lives might make a difference for others around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the King now.
Our prayers this morning will be interspersed with silence during which you can lift your own prayers to the Lord. And I'll finish each section with Jesus Christ, King of Kings, to which the response is, may your kingdom come. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. Let's pray. Jesus, dying by crucifixion between criminals, is the anointed King of all creation, in whom all things are reconciled. Through Jesus our King, let us pray. As we celebrate Jesus, the head of the church body, we pray for all the members with their various gifts and ministries. We pray that even in our weaknesses, we can be used to your glory for the good of the world. Jesus, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. May all monarchs and heads of state be led in ways of righteousness and justice and recognise with humility that they are called to serve. We pray for all shepherds rescue teams and troubleshooters for all who work to recover the lost. Jesus, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. May we reach out to one another, value one another with greater love and better understanding. We pray for our homes, our relatives, our neighbours and our friends, particularly those who do not yet realise the extent of your love for them. Jesus, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. May those who have been scattered far from their homes and loved ones being able to live again in peace and happiness. May the bitter and resentful find hope again and the confused find new direction. Jesus, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. May the dying know your closeness and those who mourn their loved ones know for certain that your kingdom stretches across both sides of death. Jesus, King of Kings, may your kingdom come. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving as we realise again the extraordinary extent of your love for us. As for Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Collect for today. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh.
Well, that concludes our service for this morning and that concludes our services for the year, the church's year. So next week we will be into Advent and the beginning of the church's year. So have a great week and I'll see you all next week, hopefully with an Advent uh, wreath behind me, ready to be lit. Have a good week. Bye for now. <laughs>